Hello everyone, my name is Pixel Riffs and welcome back to the Minecraft Survival Guy. You know, if you're having a good day, today we're starting off this episode in a hole <laughs> next to the iron farm because I have been AFKing for some more iron. I might actually collect up this crafting table and bring that with me. So yeah, the first time well, after I built this iron farm, I said I was going to AFK overnight to see how much iron I got. That didn't work out so great because I accidentally hit escape before I went away and that paused the game. But it pauses the game on single player. Not a multiplayer, obviously, because on multiplayer other people will be on the server and you can't just pause the server for yourself. But even though the lava animation is moving in the background here, the game is actually paused. No mobs will spawn, no mobs will drop from the sky in the case of this iron farm. So th there's one way to avoid that, which is opening your world to LAN, which is just local area network, meaning anybody else in your household could log in if they're on the same network but unfortunately yeah that meant we didn't get a whole lot of iron that night it was a bit of a silly mistake but i ended up afking for the next day and another night after that and we have a whole lot of iron now this is actually really cool as, as an example because you can actually tell how many iron blocks you have by the rows of this so like one row of that is 64 iron blocks because it's nine stacks of 64 uh, so we have 128 iron blocks and a few extra in here, which is incredible. That's actually a really, really good, uh, a good amount to start off today's episode. Because today we're going to be doing something that people have been requesting for a long, long time. Hopefully we're going to do it anyway, because it requires a little bit of a bit of RNG, a bit of luck with the drops we're going to get. But today, hopefully, we should end up fighting the wither. Part of the reason I have been AFKing for all of this iron, part of the reason I wanted to set up an iron farm before fighting the wither at all, is that when you beat the wither, you acquire the materials to assemble something called a beacon. And that requires a lot of resource blocks, whether they are iron, diamond, gold, or uh, emerald blocks in order to build a kind of pyramid for the beacon to sit on. And iron is probably the most easily acquirable of those, except for maybe emeralds. And speaking of emeralds, I have something to show you guys, because one of the side effects of AFKing for a day and a night for iron is that the villager breeder was running in the background, and it has bred a whole lot of villagers. Now, they aren't going to be filtering down into this cell here, because I've closed the trap doors, so we just have a few villagers left in there. But what we have in here is absolute villager chaos. <laughs> there are so many of them in here now. So what I've actually done is I've gone up to the cell up here and I've taken all the doors out of it. So this villager in here is no longer registering as a village and hopefully none of the villagers in here should be able to breed anymore. In fact, I've not seen heart particles for a little while. So it is my hope that that is permanently disabled for the time being. I've got all of six of the doors in my inventory. And we'll probably find something else to do with those. We might be able to actually sort out a villager sorting mechanism that can transport them into little cells where we can trade with them and have them protected from zombie attacks. But as it is, they're up there right now. They're not really going to be causing any kind of problems. So I'm going to leave them there and then hopefully later on we'll be able to sort those out and we'll be able to get some good trades out of them. But today we're going to be fighting the wither, which means returning to the nether. I'm going to head over to my farmhouse and grab a couple of potions of fire resistance just in case some of this goes wrong. But after that, I will meet you guys over at one of the nether fortresses, the one that we found a little bit further away, the one that's over a giant lava lake will probably be the best place to try this out. So a couple of reasons for coming out to this nether fortress in particular. One being that I haven't really explored a whole bunch of it. There are torches around the place and I have been here and there, but I have not seen everything this nether fortress has to offer. The second being that it's above a giant lava lake for the most part, and that means there is going to be a lower chance of mobs spawning around us in the netherrack, which hopefully means a slightly higher chance of hostile mobs like wither skeletons spawning here quite frequently. And in fact, I can see one up there on the tower there already, so I'm probably going to try and head over to him and see if we can take him out. Now, I've got a Looting 3 sword on me, and Looting 3 is going to be basically a necessity as far as this goes, because what we are here to do is collect with a skeleton skulls. And of course, as soon as I get over here, it looks like the guy's despawned, and I'm pretty much surrounded by blazes, but that's not going to be a huge problem, as long as I don't shoot that pig man, probably not the best idea. But yeah, the, uh, the blazes aren't going to be a huge problem. They spawn naturally all over the place in nether fortresses anyway, so we'll just take care of these guys. I'm also going to spend a little bit of time covering over some stuff like this that is clearly going to be a massive death trap. Yeah, there's a lot of very, very bad looking drops around here, but overall this is a pretty good nether fortress. It's nice and open, we've got lots of space around us so that we can see where the, where the skeletons might spawn, 
and it's going to be a nice area to clear out and eventually make into a larger wither skeleton farm. Like, we're going to make this into an area that is specifically designed for gathering wither skeletons. But we're not going to do that today, because that requires an awful lot of work and probably more resources than we have right now. So I think the best thing for us to do right now is to open out as much space here as possible so that the wither skeletons have a chance to spawn. Now, they will only spawn within the bounding box of a nether fortress, which is basically anywhere that you see this nether brick generating. There might be a slightly wider area to to either side but for the most part you will find them spawning inside these pathways and a lot of people seem to think although i think this is a bit of a misconception that they spawn more frequently at these kind of crossroads sections here and there so it may be worthwhile actually opening some of these areas out a little bit to see if you get more spawns around there but i think that's mostly anecdotal i don't think there's actually any game code to back that up again i'm sure that's something people will correct me on in the comments if they have any evidence to support that for now i think our best option is going to be just to explore this nether fortress as best we can and thankfully i've got my elytra on me so if i make any difficult jumps and things like that then it's going to be a little bit easier to glide around the place. One other thing I recommend doing is going around and taking out any torches that you've already placed on the walls because if you want wither skeletons to spawn they do need a low light level much like any other kind of hostile mobs they need a light level of seven or below which is going to mean this video gets a little bit dark for some of you so apologies for that but it's pretty much the only way that I can show the wither skeletons spawning in here. But the process of acquiring wither skeleton skulls is a bit of a grindy one and you will find yourself just kind of wandering around back and forth in these nether fortresses trying to track down the nearest wither skeletons to you and <laughs> these guys can be a little bit uh, a little bit tricky as <laughs> as it goes let's try and knock him down off of there there we go as you might expect the biggest obstacle here is going to be the drop rate wither skeletons have a pretty low chance of dropping their skulls and looting three will increase that but it can only take you so far so what you're going to find yourself doing is flying around or moving around the nether fortress looking for large patches of wither skeletons spawning in areas like this and then hopefully <laughs> getting yourself into a situation where blazes aren't going to fireball you at a distance and you can take these guys on one at a time. If this happens inside the fortress it might be preferable because for a start there is less chance of you knocking them off ledges like that and that guy has definitely died down there but also there's a better chance of you being able to defend yourself using the three block high barriers that we talked about before because where the skeletons are three blocks tall and they can't get through two block high spaces meaning that you can take them out a little bit easier if you've got a barrier in front of you protecting you. Now the blazes over here have despawned which means we can sneak up on this guy and oh we were going to get the drop on him there for a second but apparently not. There's a ghast floating around in there in the background which I should probably take out in case he decides to attack us. Nice. As always, the nether is a pretty perilous place full of hostile mobs that are going to be firing fireballs at you and pigmen that you need to avoid hitting and that kind of stuff. So this is going to take a little while. Oh, there's four diamonds in this chest. <laughs> nice. Some gold horse armor and a saddle, which I'll probably leave there because I have no need for them right now. Searching for wither skeletons is also a good time to have the subtitles turned on all the volume turned up because you can occasionally get the trademark kind of clank noise that they make popping up in corridors here and there which will direct you to where some wither skeletons are hanging out because otherwise they can be quite tricky to find and it is going to be an exceptionally grindy process. The fun thing about wither skeletons is that they will still drop bones and coal and occasionally stone swords which you can probably just chuck out because you'll be well beyond the stage of stone swords at this point point. and if you're hearing wither skeleton noises and you're not sure what they're coming from check the roof because there's usually a high chance that they will spawn on roofs where there's a lot of surface area for them to spawn. There you go, there's a couple up here and one's coming to attack me now. But this is a fine example of how difficult it is to get a Wither Skeleton skull. Because if you look at the mobs I've killed, we can scroll down to Wither Skeleton here. I've killed 32 of them so far and I have not yet received a Wither Skeleton skull. So, like I said, these are incredibly rare drops. And it looks like we're about to get our first Wither Skeleton skull. There we go, we get an advancement for that spooky, scary skeleton. And that was, I think, Wither Skeleton about number 40 or something like that. And of course, they're luring me closer to this blaze spawner I don't want to tangle with right now. There we go, 37 Wither Skeletons it took us to get that one skull. And that is with an enchantment that increases our odds of getting rare drops. So, to be quite frank, it's going to take us a fair while to get the Wither Skeleton skulls we need. And we need three of them in order to summon the Wither. So, I think we're going to spend a little bit more time here off camera just getting this stuff done, flying around and collecting Wither Skeleton skulls. We're not going to be creating any kind of Wither Skeleton farm in this episode because that requires a fairly large amount of work and it's not the kind of thing I want 
want to do straight off the bat. I don't want to intimidate anybody into thinking that they have to make a Wither Skeleton farm in order to get the skulls. It just makes it a little bit easier in the long run. But for now, I'm going to spend a little bit more time here at this fortress, tracking down Wither Skeletons to collect their skulls, and then we're going to head back to the overworld and prepare for what is going to be the fight of our lives. And after the best part of an hour trying, I think we've probably been here for about 45 minutes now, I managed to kill how many Wither Skeletons? 48! That was actually really lucky, because I've just acquired my third Wither Skeleton Skull. And of course, as soon as I switched off the recording, basically the next Wither Skeleton I killed dropped a skull. So it is really just a matter of luck. Looting 3 will definitely help though. So now we have everything we need to summon the Wither. We've got enough Soul Sand back at the farmhouse which should be the only other thing you need to summon the wither we got three wither skeleton skulls we could always grab a bit more soul sand from around here if we needed it but i don't think we will now comes the part that is probably most important about fighting the wither and that is to prepare well this is the time to brew up potions for things like instant health strength and uh, possibly even fire resistance, because we're probably going to be fighting the wither down close to bedrock. There might be some lava involved, so it's usually a good idea to bring a fire resistance potion or two. Also, night vision, because the wither is quite a destructive force and can t sometimes take out any torches in the surrounding area. So I usually bring a potion of night vision just in case. I also recommend grabbing a bucket of milk from these cows, because the wither effect applied by wither skeletons is also applied quite frequently by the with a boss. If ever there was a time to make some golden apples, now is probably that time because having additional regeneration and saturation effects is really going to help you. Lastly, I am probably going to leave my sword and some of the other tools that I don't really need in this chest. I might take one of my <laughs> worst pickaxes, maybe this efficiency four pickaxe, so that I don't have to worry too much about losing valuable tools. The bow I will definitely bring with me, and for the sword, I'm actually going to bring this smite and unbreaking sword, which I have another smite four book so I can combine it for smite five. The wither is an undead mob and smite will do an exceptional amount of damage to it so if it's your first time fighting the wither I recommend even choosing smite over sharpness. This is pretty much the only time I will recommend that but it can prove incredibly useful in this fight. So as a bit of a checklist before we do this fight here is what I have. We have four soul sand and three wither skeleton skulls. These are the materials required to summon the wither boss in the first place. We have a bucket of milk to get rid of the wither effect and any other potion effects we happen to have after the fight. We have a golden apple in case we need emergency absorption and regeneration effects. We have two instant health potions, in fact we have three instant health potions, uh, a couple of regeneration two potions, and a strength two potion. I think those are pretty much the minimum of potions you will need, if it, especially if it's your first time fighting the wither. You'll probably want to bring a bunch of instant health and regeneration just to make sure that you can recoup all of the damage that the wither is going to be dealing to you. Optionally, you might also want a potion of night vision, swiftness, and fire resistance. Night vision because the wither might take out any torches in the area, swiftness so that you can move around a little bit faster and get away if you need to, and fire resistance in case the wither breaks through to a cave that has lava in it and you risk taking damage from the lava. In terms of your weapons, you want to have a weapon with smite 5, or at the very least sharpness 5, and a bow as powerful as you can make it. I'm, I'm using a power 4 bow, that will probably be enough at this point in time. I've got a few ender pearls as well, maybe for safety, bucket of water, likewise. We don't really need to bring the crafting table with us. And one last thing I am going to do is swap out my elytra for some actual protection in the form of a chest plate because the elytra doesn't have any kind of armor value to it at all and can't be enchanted with any kind of protection enchantment so it is best left in the ender chest especially because it's very valuable and we don't want it breaking if we lose it in this wither fight. Now to the more experienced players it might seem like I'm over preparing and maybe I am but in terms of your first time fighting the wither it is best to go in over prepared just so you know exactly what you're up against and i have to apologize now to the bedrock players who are watching this tutorial because the wither on bedrock is apparently much harder has about twice as much hp has additional phases where it spawns wither skeletons in and tends to glitch out a little bit and is quite difficult to fight the java wither fight by comparison is relatively easy and especially if you've over prepared like i have you shouldn't have a hard time with it at all but it is always best to go 
in very, very well prepared for this fight because things can go pear-shaped very quickly. So this is either going to look like I'm making it incredibly easy or it's all going to go wrong and we're all going to die. Now, one last important thing to note when it comes to the Wither fight is location. Location is very important. For a start, you don't want to be fighting the Wither next to anything you've built or anything that you're worried about losing because the Wither is a destructive boss. It will break blocks. It will break them often. It will break them frequently. It will break them at range or up close. There is no hiding anything you've built from the Wither. So <laughs> generally speaking, it is advised to fight the Wither a fair distance away from any of your bases or anything that you've built, anything that you care about, and down in a mine somewhere close to bedrock. Now we're talking probably between like the Y40 and Y10 range might be a good place to fight him. To that end, I'm probably going to dig down into this mountain and I have done a little bit of mining around here before, so it's possible, although unlikely, that we might come across a strip mine or some sort of cave that I've dug into before. Either way, we're going to mine down until we can make a pretty slim passageway that we're going to set up a cell at the end of, and that's where we're going to place the Wither for the first time. This is possibly the most cautious way you can fight the Wither without doing it a very cheaty way, which I will explain in a future episode. But for the time being, fighting the Wither seems like a fun challenge to take on. There we go. Looks like we're dropping down into a cave here. I'll light it up very quickly to make sure we don't encounter too many other mobs, because other mobs getting in the way of the Wither fight is not really something you want. You kind of want to just go one-on-one -on -one with the Wither if you possibly can. Can. Although during the fight, because the Wither is such a destructive force, it can sometimes target other mobs. So occasionally the other mobs can be a distraction for the Wither itself in the same way that they can be for you. We're down at about Y28 now. I might dig down a little bit further to get away from this natural cave because ideally you want to confine the Wither with as much stone and stuff surrounding it as possible. If it gets out into an open cave, it will be more maneuverable. It will have a higher chance of attacking you. So this cave here that I've just dropped into is not ideal. We'll see if we can dig into a wall or something like that. That should give us a little bit more room to maneuver. And I feel like if we encounter any emerald ore down here, that'll also be kind of fun. But you can probably hear in the walls that there is a lot of lava around. So I think it's probably a good thing if we get a little bit further away from this location, head out in this direction, maybe. Wait a second, am I? Oh, there is some emerald ore and some mossy cobblestone. Is this a spawner? It is a zombie spawner. Hello. <laughs> well, we won't worry too much about this, but we haven't converted a zombie spawner yet in this series. Oh, brilliant. It's given us another golden apple. Fantastic. And a loyalty three book. Ooh, all right, I'm gonna leave that in this chest for now because I don't want to risk losing it in the fight. Okay, I've explored a little bit further into this cave. We're digging a long hallway here, a one block wide, two block high hallway. That will probably be the best place to start this fight. And I'm going to explain before the fight happens what's about to happen because all this is going to happen very quickly. The first thing we're gonna do is place a T-shape of soul sand in here in this kind of formation there. And we're going to add the three wither skeleton skulls on top of that. Once we place the last skull, and you have to place a skull last for it to work correctly, the Wither will appear. The Wither is a boss mob, and the first thing it's gonna do is start to heal up. It starts with about half a health bar and is going to slowly refill that health. During that time, it will be invulnerable. We won't be able to damage it at all. And once it has finished refilling that health bar, it's going to explode. The explosion will take out a lot of blocks in the surrounding area. It'll probably take this torch out as well. And then it's going to start attacking. It will either attack the player if it sees the player or it will head for any other mobs in the area and start trying to attack them. It can see other mobs through walls and will target hostile mobs as well as passive mobs. It's basically just going to try and destroy everything in its path. It's also going to be able to break any blocks that are in its way, and that does slow it down a little bit, which is why we've dug this long hallway like so. So we can head back through here, firing at it with a bow for the first phase of the fight. During the first phase of the fight, it can be attacked with pretty much any weapon, whether that's a bow or a sword or anything else you happen to have on you. If you've got a smite axe or something like that, then, then great, you can do that. But it is going to be shooting projectiles at you, and if you get too close to it, it can damage you as well. So be very, very careful about that. That's why while the Wither is powering up, while it's still invincible, we're going to be splashing ourselves with all of the potions here, except for the instant health ones, which we will need later on, and probably saving one of the regeneration potions as well. But anytime the Wither hits you with a projectile, it can cause the Wither effect. So you have to be very careful to make sure that your hunger bar is topped up to make sure that your health is at full. And this is going to be a pretty dangerous fight. Once the Wither gets down to half health, it will be 
immune to arrows and you'll no longer be able to shoot it with a bow, which means you have to get in close with your sword and finish the job. Also, because I'm doing this for a YouTube video, I'm probably going to try and take a screenshot of it while it's in its early kind of powering up stage. And that is probably going to be the thing <laughs> that makes this fight the most dangerous. So I'm actually going to head back here and splash myself with the eight minute potions first because those will have the longest duration. The strength potion is going to be right after that. And then the regeneration potions and the health potions we will try and use as we need them. But this could either go very well or very badly. You might be about to see my first legitimate, like, non-intentional death of the series, so be warned, this is going to be a little bit hectic. Okay, here we go. I think I'm ready. Let's splash us with these potions. We've got swiftness, fire resistance, and night vision, so hopefully nothing around here should be able to harm us. We're going to put the Wither Skeleton Skulls on the top here. I'm going to take away my HUD for a second so I can get a nice screenshot of the Wither up close. Hi, fella. And now we run. <laughs> and we get an achievement for the wither appearing. Withering heights. And it explodes. Okay, the fight is on. Now it's going to try and break through some of these blocks heading towards us. And the worst part of this is that it's now kind of getting out of the way of... Yeah, okay, we can't really shoot it from the tunnel all that effectively. And it's going to start trying to get into the corner of this room. So I'm going to try and shoot it with my bow where I can. It's good right now. It looks like it's actually targeting a mob in a nearby cave. But as soon as it shakes like that and spots you, you need to be backing off into this tunnel that you've created and shoot the tail of it as best you can. Now, this bow is pretty powerful. So thankfully, yes, there we go. Once the wither starts to go into sword mode, it actually starts glowing like that. And that's when it's going to be invulnerable to bow shot. And you need to attack it with your sword. This is going really, really well so far, though. You'll notice that the Wither also constantly heals. Whenever it attacks a mob or breaks blocks, it is able to heal. But we can deliver the killing blow and pick up our reward. That went about as well as could be expected. And we got ourselves a nether star for our trouble. We didn't even need any of the splash potions and stuff. That was possibly the best tunnel we could have done. Like the defensive, <laughs> the defensive capabilities of the tunnel are not to be overemphasized because he didn't hit us once. And that is basically the textbook way of taking down the wither without using any kind of tricks like trapping it in bedrock or anything like that, which is generally how players tend to do it once they've fought the wither a couple of times and are just tired of the fight and want to farm some nether stars. But there we go, folks. We have fought the Wither and won. Success. <laughs> that really, really went very well. Like, I'm, I'm cooling down a little bit now. We really didn't need those potions. Like I said, it was going to look like I was overprepared, but that's because I know what I'm doing. The first time you fight the Wither in a cave like this, it can go very wrong very quickly. So it's always best to come in prepared. All right, well, I'm going to enjoy the next, you know, seven minutes of fire resistance and stuff that I have. It's really a shame that I didn't bring my Silk Touch pickaxe because I want all this emerald ore now. Let's at least grab that loyalty book on the way back out. There we go. That can be our reward for this. And I need to make a note of where this cave is because there's a lot of great resources down here. And here we are back at the farmhouse. I'm going to drink this bucket of milk to get rid of the potion effect because night vision was really weird on the way back here. I couldn't tell whether it was night or day <laughs> for a little while aside from the color of the sky and the fact that mobs were spawning everywhere on my route back home and they're kind of spawning everywhere around the farm right now so I need to get some sleep but there we go that is the wither fight in a nutshell it is either very very difficult or surprisingly easy and uh, like I said on bedrock you might want to go in even more over prepared than I managed to be in this episode but I just wanted to cover all the bases just in case things either went wrong or just so folks who are at home didn't get overconfident about the fight because believe me if I made that look easy it is not it is very very difficult but as our reward, we can take three obsidian from this chest and a few glass blocks from this one. And we can go into the crafting table, lay these three obsidian across there, put the nether star in the middle and surround that with glass. And we can make our first beacon. And the beacon, as I mentioned, is a block that allows you to activate various potion effects. And right now it's not going to do it because it's indoors. But here are some of the effects you can get. You can have speed, which allows you to travel faster, just like the swiftness potion. Haste, which allows you to mine things faster. Jump boost, which also has an equivalent potion that allows you to jump higher. Resistance, which gives you more defense, which is not available as a potion effect anywhere else. Strength, which is just like the Strength Potion. Regeneration, which is, again, just like the Regeneration Potion. And there are secondary effects which can actually boost some of these. You can have Speed 2 or Haste 2 as you're running around your base. The problem with that, as you can tell from the diagrams here, is that they need 
a few resource blocks in a pyramid underneath them in order to activate. And we're going to go into all of the effects of a beacon in the next episode. But for now, I think that's going to be it for this one. I hope you guys have enjoyed the Wither fight. I know it's been a long time coming and I know a lot of people have been asking for this since the very first episode. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope it lived up to your expectations. Please leave a like on this video if it did. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more and I will see you guys soon. Take care. Bye for now.